There's a good look at that uh, grand champion back there with the straight in front of you. With all that. Oh, that's six. No? That is right there, huh? Yeah, see how deep she is? Hi, and welcome to Broken Arrow Bison. In today's interview, we look at a ranch in southern Oklahoma that raises some of the friendliest buffalo that I've ever seen. Dusty Baker is the owner and operator of that ranch, and he also runs a YouTube channel called Cross Timbers Bison. Stay tuned as we listen to Dusty talk about the benefits and the challenges to raising buffalo on your own farm. Okay, Dusty Baker. And I got my ranch name, it's Cross Timbers Bison. I got it uh, from the region that we're in in, uh, in Oklahoma. It's actually the echo region where the uh, eastern forest of Oklahoma uh, blends into the open prairies of Oklahoma. So they call it the Cross Timbers region. What made you want to raise buffalo? Um, one, I saw what they went through. I studied them in college a little bit at Oklahoma State. I saw the, a uh, lot of the um, strife they went through and the um, just the treatment of them in the late 1800s, early 1900s um, with government, um, with the overhunting and then the disease brought in by, by cattle and uh, I saw that and, and then in high school, after I graduated high school, I uh, was able to work at the National Park and I was around them there, and one of my jobs was to take care of them in, the, in, the, in our park, which is in my hometown, and I just kind of fell in love with them. And uh, I don't know, they're just majestic animals. Uh, I get to raise an animal that once almost disappeared. I mean, how cool is that? There's not very many people that can say that they raise an animal that almost disappeared. And um, so I think that's one of the main things, and they're not cattle. I think that these animals are better for the land than cattle, and I think that they, uh, God made them this way, and um, they're survivors, and so it's just a neat animal to take care of and be able to raise. So we have 13 bison here. We've got um, 10 yearlings and adults, and then we have three calves. We had five when I first started, and then we uh, we lost one from a uh, a goring accident in my first year wasn't very good. We, uh, I didn't have a handling facility at the time, so what we did was we took them to Doc Parsons in Stratford on a trailer, and we brought them back, and within the 25 minutes that we brought them back, um, looked in the trailer, and all of them ran out, and there's one left in there, and she was on her side, and so I lost one. She, she got horned just being in close proximity on the trailer. First challenge is when you lose one. <laughs> That's the first thing you, uh, we learned, I looked at my wife after we lost, uh, her name was Lucy. After we lost Lucy, um, we learned real quick that you've got to have your own facility and they don't need to spend time in a trailer going back and forth to another facility. Your risks are a lot higher, obviously, but um, that was the first thing. We said, all right, it's time to spend some money. So that's the challenge. Is uh, That's one of them. There's many of them, but as, as a beginner farmer, and you know, having a normal career as a coach and a teacher, uh, you've got to find funds to uh, get things going because I'm a, I'm a do the right thing guy and I want to try to do the right thing. And when you lose an animal like that, it forces you to make a move. So we had to break down and spend some money in a facility so that we can work them here. Um, working those bison is another challenge that you face. Uh, anytime you put one of these animals in a corner, they're not going to like it. And um, so they do get stressed out. You want to keep them in low stress. So working them is, is, is tough and it's a learning process. Every time that you work them, you're learning from what they do. 
Uh, other challenges is, I wouldn't say fences, it's maybe gates. <laughs> uh, if you want to talk about, um, you know, ranch stuff. But uh, other than that, I, I don't think there's any major challenges um, from raising these animals. There's, there's lots of benefits to them, but uh, they're, they're big and scary to a lot of people, but not to, not to me after you, after you hang out with them for so much. So um, I think it's just learning maybe from them. It, you got to watch them and pay attention to them and learn from them. Do you have a worming program? And if you do, what does it look like? Yeah, so we worm them once a, or twice a year. We worm them in the fall, and then we worm them in the spring. Now, what I've, what I've learned from Doc Parsons is we give him two different brands of, of wormer. And um, the reason you do that is you rotate them because you don't want them to get, uh, you don't want the parasites to just get used to that because they'll find a way through that warmer over time if you keep being repetitive with the same brand of warmer. So we switch warmers uh, from the fall into the spring, plus you're dealing with different parasites in the fall and in the spring. So uh, we do that twice a year. Um, you can do pellets and stuff like that, but we, we really haven't had to do it with working them twice a year. So that's kind of the strategy we're on. When, when we do have one that needs metal medical attention I, I the last time this happened we loaded it up and I took her to Doc Parsons in Stratford now we're lucky because that's only 25 minutes away you know some people can be far but now that we have that here uh, we can actually run through our squeeze chute and handle it now I'm, he's gonna be the first person I call and ask what to do and he may can come down here because he's so close he can vaccinate her he's a huge resource to me and uh, the fact that he's 25 minutes away is such a benefit for us and this and these bison. So I call him and explain to him what's going on, and he kind of tells me what to do and where to go from there. So uh, having that squeeze shoot is a huge benefit. So if we do get one sick like we had, we can run them through here. Maybe my favorite thing is just their, how social they are. They just don't like being apart from each other. They're just, people ask me all the time, how do you how can you tell the difference between your bison and and that's easy for me because you've been around them so much um, but each one of them has their own character they're they're just unique animals and i know how this one acts and i know how this one acts and uh, everybody knows who dunbar is everybody knows who eleanor is and that's because they're just full of life and um i don't that's probably the neatest thing to me is and uh they're just so they're good to me and they're kind to me and um, I don't know, you can sit out in this pasture and just watch them. You can watch them graze, you can watch them come up and check you out. And they're just uh, social animals. And you can see the character in the life. I mean, they're, they're like us, you know. Every, everybody's different. And so uh, that's, what's, that's what's fun about them. You learn real quick when you learn these animals that you need good facilities. I promise you that. And uh, unfortunately, it costs money. And so you have to invest in good facilities if you want to handle these animals safely. And I highly encourage that if you're wanting to raise bison, you got to have good facilities. And what I say good facilities, you got to have good handling equipment so you can work them. You got to have good fencing and you got to have a good corral system because when you corner those animals and you start working them, they're going to run into the fences, they're going to hit each other. It's going to be it can be a little chaotic and you've got to keep them safe and you safe at the same time when you work those animals. We have a swinging gate here. They'll go around. Some people call it a tub. It's not really a true tub. It's like a U, the, end, the circle of a U, the half moon of a U. They'll go through there, and now it's all tunnel vision. Um, so now they can't see anything really left or right, and once they get in there, it's just an alley system. They come to the alley, they're held in the alley, the first one is just a holding stall to separate, to start now, they're just one at a time. The next one we actually weigh out of, I have a big uh, weight platform that we use, it's um, by uh, True Test. So we get their weight, and then the next thing comes into the actual squeeze chute, a manual squeeze chute, and that's where we uh, get them situated, we squeeze them down, and that's where we're able to vaccinate them. We can change your ear tags. We also get them preg checked in the fall. So here in about a month, we'll get them preg checked 
um, with Doc, he'll do that, and um, and then we let him go straight out here. So this is the first time we'll be able to work them with the barn, which is nice. So if it's uh, cold or rainy, it'll help some. But the main thing about that is we've got extra storage, and then it protects the equipment because this stuff is expensive. I love a uh, hydraulic squeeze chute, but uh, maybe someday when you have a bunch more bison. So we've got barbed wire fence. This is one of the first ones we put up. Uh, this is a five strand. It's an interior fence, so it's okay to have five strands. We use six foot T post, but I would, what we started doing, especially our exterior fence, we started buying seven foot T post, and then we're starting to put up six strands of barbed wire. I went to West Texas uh, last weekend and they did the same thing. Uh, his T posts are spread out maybe 10 or 12 foot apart. He had eight foot tall T posts and in between he had what we call cedar stays, about probably four foot cedars uh, post tied in between. Uh, you can do this. A lot of people think that you have to build these really tall uh, exotic fences for bison and uh, you can if you want. It's going to cost you a lot more money. If you want to pipe the whole thing, that's you can do that. That's great. It's more secure probably than this, but if you've got the money, you can spend it. Buffalo or bison? Bison. Bison, bison, bison. Genus species is bison, bison. I get that all the time. People always are like, they somebody says buffalo and they're like, it's bison in front of me. And like, I don't care. They think I get, you know, angry about it. I'm not going to get angry about it. Common name is we all grew up calling them as buffalo, and that's not our fault. The people before us did it, and the people before them did it, and uh, so it's okay. But if you want to get technical, it's bison. I say bison. I don't know. I wouldn't change anything. I, I really love the experience that um, you know my wife and I and my family has gone through. I would, uh, um, besides losing that one, obviously. Um, there's, there's things you can change within, uh, you know, working them and how you raise them. But major things, I, I wouldn't change anything really. I, I, I wish I had them earlier, you know, and had them longer because it, it takes a little bit of time to actually start making a revenue. But everything happens for a reason and uh, I wouldn't change anything though. We, we've loved the road that we've been on with these animals and they're, uh, it's been good, yeah. Talk to lots of ranchers and producers. Reach out to the USDA, NRCS, and the FSA for funding or for help on your land. And then also, probably the number one is bisoncentral.com. You go to the NBA, National Bison Association. You can start classes on there. You can uh, purchase an annual membership. You can purchase a lifetime membership on that website you can be plugged into two conferences a year. They do a summer conference and they do a winter conference. Who doesn't want to raise bison? Who doesn't want to watch these animals every day and hang out with them? And you see what I do with them and um, who wouldn't want to raise them?